This is One Sentence News, a daily podcast featuring three news stories with a sentence-long summary and one sentence of context apiece. I'm Colin Wright. This is a sponsored message. I've been using Anchor as my podcast host for a while now, and it's been a pleasure to use. Anchor offers benefits that most other hosts do not. It's free to use, but it also has a collection of tools that allow you to create a podcast completely within the Anchor website or smartphone app. They distribute your show to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other distribution channels without any additional effort on your part, and you can make money from your podcast without any minimum audience size. So you can use it as a more traditional podcast host like I do, but it's also got everything you need to start a podcast from scratch. If you're keen to give it a shot, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's Monday, January 9th, 2022. Let's talk about the news. From Reuters, Bolsonaro supporters invade Brazil presidential palace, Congress, and Supreme Court. After months of protests, thousands of supporters of former President Bolsonaro of Brazil have broken into Brazil's Congress, Supreme Court, and presidential palace buildings, seemingly intent on causing as much damage as possible and attacking policemen who have tried to hold them back. This is a developing story, but initial assessments suggest that this attack was inspired by the January 6th attacks on the U.S. Capitol building by supporters of former U.S. President Trump a few years ago, and that Bolsonaro, who was last seen in Florida, may in fact have some of Trump's former advisors on his payroll. The playbook of contesting the recent presidential election in Brazil will also be familiar to anyone who paid attention in the U.S. in 2020, as Bolsonaro claimed without evidence leading up to the election that if he lost, it would be because the election was rigged, and his supporters seemed to believe this unbacked claim, though many of their signs relating to election rigging conspiracy theories are in English, so it's an open question who the intended audience for this spectacle actually is. From the Associated Press, McCarthy elected House Speaker in rowdy post-midnight vote. It took 15 votes, but former House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy was finally elected as House Speaker just after midnight, early Saturday morning. This was a fairly tumultuous and embarrassing round of votes for McCarthy, and arguably for mainstream Republicans in general, as in essence, a cluster of about 20 further right Republicans were able to hold up McCarthy's ascension to speakership, which as a consequence held up the new House being called into session. McCarthy had to give in to all sorts of demands in order to finally convince enough of them to stop voting against him, so he has taken that top House position, but he's the weakest House Speaker in a very long time because of everything he gave up to get there. And there are already some murmurings that those who oppose him within his own party might try to oust him using new powers they've been granted that would allow them to do so more easily sometime in the near future. And if you're interested in reading more about how this storyline played out, I wrote a quick bit about it for my other publication, Notes on the News, which you can find at notesonthenews.com. And from the Washington Post, low water levels have created an energy crisis at the world's largest dam. The Kariba Dam, which is the world's largest based on water storage capacity and which straddles the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe, is suffering record low water levels, triggering blackouts for millions of people throughout the region. Low water inflow from upriver sources and a lack of rainfall has reduced Lake Kariba, the water source that powers the dam, to about 1% of its capacity as of December 28th, which is down from 20% one year previous. Both countries are currently receiving less than half as much power as usual from the dam, and folks in Zambia are regularly seeing 12 hours of power cuts each day, while those in Zimbabwe have been facing 19-hour daily power cuts. If you're finding some value in One Sentence News, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects, like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts, at understandery.com.